all covered. In Ephesians, you all know me, don't you? You know where I'm going. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Oh, Jesus. You have resurrected us. That resurrection means that if there's any sickness or disease, there's any poverty, there's any, um, where there's uh, depression or anything, he said he's resurrected us. He has resurrected us. We've got to take that by faith, folks. Take it by fakes, faith according to the word of God. Now, in 17, Ephesians 1:17. I thank you that you are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. I ask that you would give unto each one of us now your wisdom. We want your revelation of the word that's coming forth. We want the knowledge of you. We want now the eyes of our understanding to be open, to be enlightened, so that we will know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your... We will know what we're supposed to be doing. We will know that we are the head and not the tail. We will know that we are above and not beneath. We will know that we, we, Father God, are the body. Jesus Christ is the head. And we are the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Do you agree? Amen. We have an agreement. Amen, amen. You may be seated. I want to say as well, happy Mother's Day to each mother here. And women, women are strong. Guys, you know a woman gets something on her mind, right, you folks? Do, do you guys realize that? That when a woman gets something on her mind, you just back off and let her at it? Is that not true? We know that? Do, do you know that? Oh, look at He's a perfect. I got such a nice card from him. Oh, yes. So God says, women are so amazing. Mothers are so amazing. That's what he said. We celebrate you and all that you do for your family. Think on it. God makes women multitaskers. Men are too, but women seem to excel in that. As you put the needs of your family first, you pay attention to every single detail of the household. Is that true? Before I left the house, I have to put this, this morning, I have to put this and this. That has to be in order. That's just the way God made me. The next one, you don't have to. I don't care. So God wants to remind us what he says in Proverbs. Listen to this, 31, 29. Many, many women do normal things, but you surpass, surpass them all. Women, women. Many women do normal things, but you surpass them all. That's for you folks. You know, there's always so much to do in a mother's role, so God wants to encourage us with that unconditional love, and if you have a need, you go to him, and he will fulfill that need. You realize that, don't you? But let's, let's do this here this morning. We want to get, and, and um, I'm going to have him bring up a picture for me, so let's get a better understanding of what faith and belief is. This is a gift from God. It is Mother's Day. We're not going to go on and on about mothers. We're going to go on about God, right? And it's okay to go on and on about mothers, but we'll celebrate that today. And I know I got roses, and I got presents already. I just am so blessed. So this, listen to this in Hebrews 11.1. 1. I believe in God that his faith is taking care of us. Do you believe that God's faith is taking care of us? Do you believe that? Mm-hmm. So listen to this. This is the Bible dictionary, how it defines faith as a belief or in confident attitude, a confident attitude, a confident attitude toward God involving commitment to his will for one's life. The Bible dictionary defines faith as a belief in or confident attitude toward God involving commitment to his will for one's life. The dictionary also says, belief is to place one's trust in God's truth. That's faith. The word belief in the Greek is bistos, which means confidence or trust. In essence, the words 
are one of the same, faith and belief. And I'll go on to show you that. But let's look where God, Almighty God, has put us. Would you bring that up, please? Let, let's get a picture of Revelations 1.6. Who are you? All right. Can you see that? Okay. What is on top there? What does it say? The Lord's what? Anointing. The Lord's anointing. Under that it says king. Then he's got Moses, David, Christ, the church. Now we have the Mosaic law. We have the Davidic law. All right. We've got a Noahic law as well, but we won't go into that. But what happens? What's, what's coming off that cross? It's a cross, isn't it? Okay, prophet and priest. What are we? See the church? Who is the church? We're the church. We have all of that because we've been given that through Jesus Christ. What is downloaded in you? All that's downloaded in you is right there. You are a prophet, you're a priest, and a king because of Jesus Christ. So now you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6. You're seated there. You have a position. You have a role. You're a co-creator with Christ. And by doing that, he said, I have to download you with everything you have need of. If I'm going to send you out like uh, we have a masonry business, you have a trucking business, people have, you don't, you, don't, you don't send them out like we don't send them out without a trowel, without a wheelbarrow, without, you know, plans, or, or just go out there and do the job. What job? Well, no, go find a house and work on it. You don't do that. You, you make plans, don't you? Everybody has, right? You have plans. God does not send us out empty-handed. He has sent us out with the tools, and here is the tools. So when you take this word of God, he said, nothing is impossible for you because of him. So when I, every time I look at that, when I was reading, I got the Davidic law, the book by, by David. It, it, it's, it takes, yesterday, I don't know how many hours I was on it, and just two pages. It's so delicious, but it's all scripture. And it goes into the Hebrew, and it goes into David, how David was a type of Christ, and how he brought in who? He calls him the father of the son. Jesus. Wow. Because of the bloodline. In the natural. In the natural. But the real father is our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that not true? All right. Wrap your minds around that. Wrap your minds around what Jesus has supplied for us. What has he supplied for you? He supplied that you can prophesy over yourself. How do you prophesy over yourself? You speak the word of God. You speak the word of God. Second Timothy 1, 7. I get scared of something. Like I'm scared like, you know, that's not going to work. This is not going to work. And you stop and say, wait a minute. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I'm prophesying over myself. Remember the prophets in the Old Testament? They prophesied. Remember that? We prophesy over our own life. We can prophesy over other people with the word of God. And that's that encouragement. So when I say God didn't give me the spirit of fear, but of love, that's Jesus. Jesus is love. Power, love, sound mind, self-discipline. He's given me that all, but I can't have it on my own. When I realize that he has given me that, then I can say, wow, I'm not on my own. I can't handle this. I can't do it. I, w I was listening to somebody the other day, a Christian young man, and he said, you know, I didn't know what to do with this test. I was just so, I didn't know. I just couldn't understand it. So he asked the Lord to give him wisdom. He asked, God, give me wisdom for this. He went in on that test. He got everyone right. Because God gave him the wisdom for every one of the questions, but then he had understanding. Isn't that awesome? So when you ask for wisdom, God says, I will give you wisdom. I will give you not only what to do, what to say, but I'll even explain it to you. So that's why when we pray in the spirit, we can expect the interpretation of our tongues. 
because that's speaking into the mysteries of God because there's things that I don't understand, you don't understand, but he will show you the mysteries in your life, but he'll wake you up in the middle of the night, in the morning, whatever. He'll give you those mysteries that you don't understand. All of a sudden you'll say, Father, I need your wisdom. I, I, you just said, yeah, yeah, okay. You want it? I'll give it. What do you need it for? I need it how to know how to do this. I knew it. And he'll give it to you. He promises it. He promises. But too many times we sit there going, mm, he's not giving it to me. When you believe that he has given it to you, you will have it. It's a guarantee. Where do I find the guarantee? Second Corinthians one twenty two. The word is guaranteed. So Jesus is not just God Almighty. He is also your servant king. He's still serving us. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So now when your enemies, anybody is coming up against you, you go and you get from that table. Well, do I just go up? No, no. With your mouth. What do you want? You tell those demon spirits to stop in the name of Jesus. And they've got to obey you. Because the life is in the seed. So now, I want to bring this up to you again. When, when you look at, at God's word in Hebrew 4.12, Hebrews 4.12, it's the living Bible translation. Listen to this. For whatever God says to us is full of living power. This, this word of God is full of living power. That's why you want to speak what this word says. It is sharper than any, it is sharper than the sharpest dagger cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing us for what we really are. Who are you really? He's exposing you that you're God's child and the, you have the victory. You have the victory over everything that comes against you. Absolutely everything. You have the victory. When you realize you've got the victory, you go, I have the victory, Satan, so get thee behind me. You get, is, can I use that word cocky? You get kind of, hmm? You've got the victory. You know what? Yesterday, I noticed this little bird, a robin. You know, we have the transits above our doors, those little windows. You know what I'm talking about? Well, when you go out our, our um, the foyer out onto the pool there, there's those, and here's this little robin up there, and she's going to make a nest. And she's bringing all this stuff. I mean, that, how can she carry that with that little beak? You know, the ties that you use, like Kenny put uh, Christmas lights all the way around the pool, the, 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 the fencing. And so he cut those, and some of those flew into the snow when he took it down so you couldn't pick them up because they had it melt. Well, she's got, you know, like a piece about that long, she's got up there and she's got that woven in the nest. She's got, then she brings mud up there. He says, I don't want her up there. They make a mess. I said, Kenny, don't. Leave her up there. I want to watch this. And listen, they've been there before. They've been on the transit above the office at my house. They, they, they move around. So there she is a little bit at a time building this nest, building this nest. She just don't give up. We walk by and she looks and she takes off. And I said, oh, don't scare her away, Kenny. You can't scare her away. She's got her mind set. That little bird mind is so set that she's going to build that nest. And yesterday, it wasn't much of a nest. You should see it this morning. But you know what she's doing? The part that shines, that, that shows that we look at from inside of the house, she's making that part higher. So we can't see her. Can you believe that? That's, isn't that what you said to me? She's making that higher so we can't see her. She's in there every day now, and she's moving around, and she takes off, and then she brings back something else. 
She's got, she goes where, you know, you folks did all that cleanup last fall that's cut and thrown in the fence line. She's going and bringing it and hanging up there. It's a mess. But it's not going to be long, and she's going to sit on those eggs, and she's going to hatch them, and she's not going to leave that nest. She is bound and determined. That was put into her to do that. Is that right? Yeah. It's put into you not to give up. You keep on going. If somebody tries to chase you off, you keep on coming back with that little bird. Just don't give up. I'm just not going to. That nest is a fine-looking nest. I just laughed and I thought, look at that, Lord, the persistence. If we, the human beings, could only be that persistent, and we are, because we take that now by faith. So now he says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, the Young's literal translation, every writing is God-breathed. This is God-breathed. That means his seed is in here and is profitable for teaching, for conviction, for setting a right, for instructions, that is in righteousness. 17, that the man of God, that's us, may be fitted for every good work having been completed. You have, all, you ask Jesus into your heart, it's done. It's done. Watching online, it's done. It's done. It's done. You have been downloaded with everything you have need of. Do you have a heart? Do you have a heart? Yes. Oh, do you have a brain? Yes. Do you have a pituitary? Yes. Can you see your pituitary? No. no. Can you see your thyroid? No. But if you look on an x-ray, you can. Do you have a stomach? It talks to you sometimes, doesn't it? Either it's hungry or it's hurting, right? But can you see it from the outside? No. You see, in the spirit realm, we cannot see what is happening. Only through this word can we see that's happening. God wants us to just go overboard with what we ask him and believe for. He wants it. So this is, I want a picture of the watermelon up there, please. Would you do that? God's, so God's word is a seed. God's faith is in the seed. You speak the word, the power is in his word. Now, that's a watermelon seed, right? Now, I bought some watermelon seed, and once again, Keegan, we're going to have to spit the seeds out. In the front, you've seen that. Be How many of you saw that? Well, anyway, right off of my porch there, Last year, I had a beautiful watermelon plant again. I think there was like six watermelon that I got off of there. You can take, no, don't do that, Eric. One day, I had squash out there one year. What was it? He went and bought stuff and put it there, and I said, well, look at that. He was pulling my leg. You stay away from my, my, my little garden out there. He's a character. I am going to go out there. I can take them and throw them out. There's, there's that bark, that red bark. Is that what you call it? Out there. But that will try to go in there, and it will, and it will grow. You know what we used to do at the cottage because the lawn in the wintertime, you know, you had snow on it, but in the summertime, by the end of the summer, what would happen is so many people would be on it, you, would, it, you were losing lawn. You can go when you've got the snow and throw grass seed on there and it'll go down and it'll grow up and be there in the spring for you. You see, seeds are going in the ground right now from plants. No, they've went in on the fall. We had a covering on them, a blanket. It's called snow and it will produce. Now you see those little seeds up there? You, see, you know watermelon, I like, oh, I like that watermelon. But it's got to have seeds. You know that, don't you? You get the seedless, that means it's been genetically altered. There's not, <laughs> throw it out. That's why I said at the store, it's get me some watermelon with seeds. See, why would they take the seeds out? So that you have to depend upon the government for the seed. Right? No. Not on our watch. 
But now, you look at, you look at that once. What do you see there? What, when you look, what do you see? What do you really see? Think on it. What have I been teaching? What the word of God is the seed. So did he, when he spoke in the garden, when he spoke the trees, when he spoke the seed and the seed and the seed, this still comes back from way back. Everything, we were kibitz in the other day, what come first, the chicken or the egg? Well, it's got to be the chicken because it, had a, it has the seed in it. It can't be the seed. How would that, come on. So now, in that seed is life. There's life in that seed. You took those seeds there and you plant them. God's faith, belief, is in those seeds. Do you realize that? God said in his word, every word that he speaks, his life is in it. Remember, it's God breathed. This is God breathed. This is God breathed. So his faith is in this word so that when we speak his word, we can believe that his faith is going to take over and make it come to pass. So 1 Peter 5, 7, keep that up, please. 1 Peter 5, 7, Amplified. Cast all of your cares, all of your anxiety, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares about you. He said, listen, I took care of you. And he says, he said, with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Huh? Very carefully. Very carefully. Right? He watches over Hmm. Deeply, deepest affection? Wow. He's in love with us. God is love. So what's he doing? He's watching over every word that you speak, and that's why you want it to, to come from here. He's got everything covered in here for your whole life. From going to war, everything. It's all covered in here. When you speak this word, his faith is in this word. Now when I believe, because I believe when I speak his word, I believe his faith is in this word and he's going to bring it to pass. Do you think so? Well, let, let's look at that. In Jeremiah 1.12, this is amplified. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. What? He's watching over this to fulfill it. Increase my faith. Hey, 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 hey. Just increase your belief that God can do it. That's what he's asking. Believe. Only believe. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8, he said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive. How can he guarantee that? Because his faith is in the word that you asked. Now just believe. And anyone who seeks will find, and the door will be open for those who knock. Now, in Isaiah 55, 11, good news translation. So also will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what I plan for it. Hmm. It will do everything I sent it to do. Right? Are you getting this? It's very simple, isn't it? It just gets me excited. I can't help it. So... I believe that the seed of God's word, that when I speak it, that it has power and it has the faith of God in it. I believe that. So now it's got to come to pass. Because I just have to believe him. I just have to believe what he said. I just have to believe it. I believe his word. If he says no weapon formed against me can prosper, any tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will show them being wrong. Yeah, he said, yeah, because you're going to speak the word over that situation. Right? Then he said in Matthew 17, 20 in the King James, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if you have faith, if you believe me, he was saying, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall, have on, you shall say unto this mountain, remove henceforth to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible for you. Can you believe that when you speak God's word, his word takes over? Can you believe that? That's what he said. Listen to this. This is, this is Mark. This is Mark. 536. Oh, it is so good. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. He was teaching us. When you have a little baby, that baby, what can they do? Eat and poop. That's something God put into them. Right? You have to help to raise them. He said, be like little children. And believe me. You know, um, you look at David. David, you know what? That boy was supposed to be out in battle. Right? It was David. You know who King David is. He was supposed to be out in battle. You know, he became very, very rich. He was a billion, billionaire. He became very rich. And he be became so popular. Here he is. Here's David. I can do anything. The king always went out and led the army. David was so sure of himself he didn't go out. He was sleeping during the day. And when he arose at night, he looked over and he saw a woman. If he would have been doing what he was supposed to be doing the day, he would have been sleeping. But God said, you hate my laws. You hate my rules because you've turned to think that you are more powerful than me. When we start doing it our own, God goes, uh-uh. No matter how wealthy you become, no matter how healthy you become, no matter what, he says, I want to be your everything. Don't forget me like David did. Did he suffer for that? Absolutely. Just think, you stay on your game plan. And when the devil comes in, you've got to stop and say, wait a minute, devil, you get out. Harassment, you get out. Poverty, you get out. Sickness, you get out. Depression, you get out. Condemnation, you get out. You've got to speak to the mountain, tell it what to do. Then he says in Luke 8, 50, he says, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not, believe only, and sh and she shall be made whole. He says, believe only. Believe what? Believe that what I did is finished. Believe that the only thing you have to speak and just believe what I said, what I put in you, and it will come to pass. That's what he guaranteed us in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Woo what does he say? Only believe. Listen, when you ask Jesus into your heart, did you have to muster it up to you? Ooh, ooh, I gotta ask. Did they sit and say, hey, you've got to believe. No, you've got you to gotta have faith that you're saved. Did you have to do that? What did you do? What did you do when you got born again? When I listened to Minnie Johnson and she's up there speaking, I wanted what, they, I wanted what she had. And when she said, Jesus, come into my I said, Jesus, come into my It was his faith that came in because the only thing that I had was belief from what she said that I was going to go to heaven. <gasps> Ooh, isn't that sweet? Are you excited? Say amen. amen. God's word is so good. John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth 
not is condemned already. Who? Because he hath not believed in my name, in the name of the only begotten Son. That's all he wants us is to believe it. And he said, I'll do the work. He is here to serve you. He has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. The presence in your enemies, right? Who's coming up against you? What's coming up against you? Whoa. Now, in, in John 5.45, only believe. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God? Only believe. God honors you. God honors that when you speak and you believe him, it's already finished. It's already finished. It's already finished. It's already finished. Oh, Corrieti. I got to tell you, yesterday I was praying. We had a long coffee time together, a dear friend of mine. And um, man, when we prayed, we prayed, I don't know how long we prayed, and we just prayed over our president, and we prayed over the Jews, and we, because, now, when is it, tomorrow? The, no, the 15th? The, 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 the tel tomorrow. Tel Aviv. Where, where, where our, oh, I'm excited, where our embassy was, is moving over to Jerusalem. Pastor Kenny, do, do, you, do you remember? Um, they came to him and they came to, to uh, Trump and how many millions of dollars or a billion or something like that to build an embassy in Jerusalem? And he was ready to sign the paper? And the Lord arrested him? He said, whoa, 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 whoa. What have we got now? That's a lot of money we're spending. Really? He says, well, we have a building over there we own already. He said, we do. That's all we would have to do is what? What would we do? But before they move, they had to do some renovating for a hundred and some thousand only. When you've already got something, he saved us how many billions of dollars? Because God arrested him, and he started crossing things. Did you hear that on the team? Did you hear that? He was in, where was the last place? In Hawaii, Ohio, he was speaking. He started, did you hear that? He started crossing out, no, I am not signing this, uh-uh. We're not spending this kind of money. Who is he looking out for? Wow. Why do you think the devil's against him so much? Why do you think he just keeps on going and he really don't give a diddly squat? Because he knows that God assigned him and he is just going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because he's looking just like Jesus did for us. He's looking for us. He's looking for us. And it's always, you know, he's still going around. He was in, um, where was he? The we Indiana having a meeting, what do they call those again? Um, where you go and talk to the people, like not a, a town hall meeting. He's still going places because he wants people to stand behind him who is standing behind God and let's go and let's take this country back. How many of you, don't, don't put your hands up, like your insurance plan, your life insurance I am hearing thing after thing after thing about people that have said we have to pay more now and when we don't pay, then we have to pay a penalty and we can't even afford the penalty. Well, he said they're going to do some beautiful stuff for our insurance. I know 100% it's going to happen. It's already done. It's already in the works. Do you understand that? What about the pharmaceutical? Do you know when my mom was alive, there was a, a pill that she was supposed to take for $80? That's how many years ago? Did, uh, how many have ever taken medication and this stuff is expensive when a pharmaceutical? He said, that's enough. We're changing this. What is that doing to the people? It's making the pharmaceutical rich. It's taking care of their pockets. But what about us? So money is coming back when uh, Kim shared that with Scott Walker. Get on there. Get that what you've got coming. 
They want to get money back to us, not money from us. The government is supposed to serve us. Jesus Christ is here to serve us. That's why we want to pray for him every day. Pray for our president, for our vice president. It is amazing the darndest things they come up against him for, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding. The three hostages, one, the 55-year-old, was supposed to serve, what, 10 or 12 years hard labor? He's been there one year. How many years? 10? 10 or 12? They got him home. Hard labor. Like I said on Wednesday night, that young man, Ott, Otto, that breaks my heart. They should have brought that young man home. So all he did was take a poster off of a wall. I think it was in the hotel. And look what they did. We had a leader that left him die. If that was your kid, how, how would you feel about that, every one of you, about your kids? Okay, tell me this. That's, that's some hard stuff to swallow, isn't it? One of your sons or brother or husband What did they do to four men? They left them die, and they were calling out. Now, where was that? Benghazi. They left them die, and our president and the Secretary of State, Secretary of State were sleeping. President Donald Trump. <coughs> went to the airport to greet these young, uh, these fellows. What was it, 3 o'clock in the morning? Him and his wife. That's the kind of representative I want, folks. This United States, remember, make America great again? Now it's keep America great. Do you understand that? So now, listen to this. This is really good. Acts 21, 25, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangling and from fornication. Only believe that I can take care of you. Philippians 1, 29, for unto you is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. What does that mean, to suffer for his sake? Think about it. What does that mean? Do people ever ridicule you for your faith? Huh? Do they ridicule you? Do they? What do you go? Thank you, Jesus. The devil knows my name. I must be pretty important. Thank you, Jesus. I really don't give a diddly squat what people think about me. I know what he thinks about me, and that is the important thing. I really don't give a diddly squat. It's God that's on the move. I'm. A, you know what? When it said that in Psalms 105, 24, I believe it is. No, 14. Well, he says, this is what God says. Is our president and vice president, has God anointed them to lead at this time? Did you, did you ever lead of all, see all the things that's turning around for our country? Did you see all that's coming out of the sewer and out of the swamp? God says, do not touch the ones that I have anointed. Because if you touch them, then you have just sold your soul, your mind to the devil, and then the devil gets to come in and wreck havoc. Havoc, havoc, havoc. That, that's, hey, don't touch my anointed. You don't want to touch each other. You're anointed. When you get a leader that's anointed like God, God put him in place. Did they touch Moses? Oh. What happened? 
when his sister and brother, Moses' sister and brother, came up against. What happened? Who are you, Moses, do you think you can do this? Touch the anointed. And what happened to his sister? She got leprosy. Praise God that Moses could pray and clear up the leprosy. Do you think it, it taught us a good thing? You don't mess with God's anointed. You pray for them. If you don't like something they're doing, put yourself in their place. I sure as heck couldn't do what he's doing. I couldn't do it, but I get to pray for him. So when you ask Jesus into your heart, you believe the word, and that comes into your ears, and the faith to take a whole of it is his faith. It's his faith. That's why there isn't anything that we can't say, God, give me wisdom on. Now I know, okay? The devil's coming up against me big. Hey, how many, look at us with our masonry business. Oh my goodness, you've been through hell and high water. Some of us have been through hell. I wish back then we'd have known some things because I had a kick royal butt. You can do that. What is he coming up against you with? You stand and you take the word of God and you take that word that's sharper than any two-edged sword that goes right into the marrow, into the, what is the marrow? The marrow produces the blood. You take the devil and you tell him, get out in Jesus' name. Realizing that the moment you say that, you've just rolled your care, you've rolled that problem on, over onto him. Now he takes over and he is going to do great things, but you're going to be busy praising and worshiping him. You're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be praising worship. You're going to just, woo-hoo, woo-hoo, woo-wee. Why? Because you look at that picture. The life is in that seed. The life, every one of those little seeds are going to produce how many more? How many more are they? We don't know. But every seed may have a different number, and it depends upon the soil. We're supposed to, he says, he says, when you get born again, what I have given you now is my faith. Now take my word and speak my word because my faith is in my word. My power is in my word. Now that you've done it, just believe that I'm going to take care of it. And I'm going to cripple. I'm going to cripple the devil's plan over you. I'm going to cripple every plan the devil has over you. Hmm? North Korean, King, what is his name? Kim Young, Young, Chu Young, or whatever. Little rocket man. What happened to his mountain? That he was blowing off these, these things. What happened to the mountain? What happened? It collapsed. Do you think God did that? Do you think God did that? Do you think God? God is on the move. I think we need to play that. De Dee Dee, let's, or Debbie. God is on the move. Let's do that right now. God is on the move. Because I want you, please, 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 Understand, when you take the word of God, the word of God guarantees it will produce what you said it would. Got it? Let's do it. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. You got that in your craw, right? You don't know how to do something. You ask God how to do it, and he will show you. Kim has a baby with... with, with <laughs> I told you, Earl. <laughs> she has Danny, eight pounds and some ounces. Lots of pain. Didn't go good. She has a 10-pound, one ounce, or Cordell. How come there's pain with the first one and there wasn't with the second one? Tell me about that. You know why? Because she got the word of God. We got the word of God. We stood on that word of God when Debbie was birthing the uh, second one. Keegan. Keegan. She had pain as long as I kept. No pain. No pain, with Keegan. no pain. When I put, which one is? I put my hand on you and this oh, pain. That was turning Keegan. Yes. That was Keegan. It was it, it would, pain was trying to come on. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, we get weak sometimes when we're in the middle of a battle. Mm -hmm. 
but she took my hand and put that back on there because the pain leaves when your hand is on there. I could believe because pain is under the curse. Amen. And you take God's word and you speak it and he guarantees it. It's come to pass. It's come to pass. It's Don't you dare run from the devil. Don't you dare. Did you ever see the bull run? The bull run in, in Spain or place like that? And then the, are the bulls chasing him? Are they stupid? Are they stupid? Is that stupid gone to seed? The oh. do you, you know, do you ever see this, this, this a duck or something? You go out when we were in, um, in Florida, Phoenician Gardens there, and it was the ducks out there or the swans. What are the white ones again? Swan. Anyway, they're laying, they're, they got their eggs and stuff, and they didn't want us around there. They'd come after you. Like, Ooh, you got out of the way because they were going to cut you up. That's the way we got to be. You cut the enemy up. Don't you dare let him get the best of you. You take the word of God, and you start speaking that word. And I'd, you'll speak that word every day and every day, and you'll say, I know that I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I know I've got the victory. He that is in me is stronger than he that is in the world. Get your scriptures. I tell you this over and over. Put them up. Put them up. Put them up. Put them in the front of your Bible. I don't want to show you all I got in here. Put your scripture up and start believing it. Get such an image inside of you. Just get that. I'm that bulldog. Oh, I see that beautiful doghouse behind that fence. Peek through the window, through the little, the little door. Who I'd like to have that. Wait a minute. That's part of my property anyway. What's that bulldog doing on my property? Are those two big bulldogs? And that little bulldog says, I'm going to go take it back. Goes in the fence. I'm going I'm to play with him now. Hey, this belongs to me. Give it to me in Jesus' name. Oh, and they come and they rough him up and beat him up and he crawls out. He goes again. Rough him up ten times. Finally, he went in there. And you know what? The fear of God came on those Doberman pinchers. And they ran. See, that's why you fight the good fight. You don't give up. You don't give up. You do not give up. The word is guaranteed. You've got it. Great things should be happening. Don't you ever run from the devil. Hmm? You don't never run. Never. When we were in Eleuthera, we went splorking. That's going down in a cave. He had this, he, he had to go down this hole. It, you can't be very big to get that. You, you wouldn't have gotten down the hole, Mikey. You had to go down this rope ladder to get down. And then every other person got a flashlight. There was, this was not with lights in the cave, but there was a stream of water that ran off to the side. But what the, our, the guy that took us there, Jim, it wasn't really a tourist town, very poor. One set of lights, one police car that was broke down. <laughs> hmm? So we went down there. But he says, you don't have to go down there. Because I thought, oh, I don't want to go down. Oh, Kenny knows I don't like to go in places. Uh-uh. I'll move heaven and earth to get out of there. He said, you can stay up here, or you can go down there, and we'll go to the other end, and we'll come up. Well, I'll stay here. But the long grass was so long, huh? as long as Steve got check. Or you can stay up here. But as it start getting a little bit later in the day, the snakes come out. Oh! <laughs> All of a sudden, I was going... He's, he's, I went down in there, and then we got down in there, and he said, now, don't be afraid, because there's a little snake in here. Oh! They already told it. <laughs> oh, a little snake. Why did I stay up there? But I was down, and you weren't going back. He said, but it's okay. 
but just look out for it, okay? I didn't have a flashlight. I'd have been going, wait, everybody. We kept on going. And they'd shine. It was darker than dark down there. You know what I'm talking about. So we get to the end, and, and, and you can see the light that you're getting, you know, that little glimmer of light, and you're, let's speed it up a little bit. I tell you the truth, we were clean when we went down there. We were clean. I come out, and I look like a dirt bomb. I'm not kidding. I looked, I was sweating, but there was dirt running on us because of, you know, there's dirt in a cave under the... You were running. I was... <sighs> So, so he said, well, we made it without the snake. Okay, now who wants to go up the rope ladder? I turned 50 years old. Who wants to go? Did you ever go up a rope ladder? You know, the steps on a rope? Is that a little hard to do? Yeah. I thought, I got to pull. I wasn't as heavy then as I am now. And I thought, oh, no. All of a sudden, I looked over, and up on this little thing, there's a little bit of grass up there, and there's a snake rolled up in there. I'll go first. Yeah, the birthday girl can go first. Well, I went up that ladder. I'm not kidding you. I went up that ladder, and they told you when to get up there. Then Jim was, or he had Reed, his son, up there already. Uh, hang on to the grass and they will get you the rest of the way. Well, it didn't take me long. They were all surprised at how well I did and how fast I will. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell Jim, you know, and, and he's not paying attention to me. Once I got up there, you know, and what is it? I was like, oh, the snake, don't tell anybody. I said, I didn't. That encouraged me. That encouraged me to go pretty fast. And when we got out there, He's teasing on me. He's, we, got back, we got back to the house that night, and we're sitting around the dinner table, and we're all laughing how fast I went up that ladder. And then they realized how. This one girl said, I'm not kidding you. If I'd have saw that ladder, I wouldn't have went. I'd have went all the way back through and went up. All the way back from the beginning and went up. So frightened. Is anything possible for those who believe? Now ask me to go up a rope ladder. That thing was the size of our silo home on the farm to go up. I, I'm not kidding you. This, they should have told me all that. They should have laid it all out. I never would have went. I would have stayed at the house. I would have stayed by the water. I'd have took a walk into town. I'd have went to those little shops that have diddly squat. I wouldn't have went there. You know what? If God told you everything you were going to go through, you'd quit right now and you'd lay down. Thank God he doesn't that you grow in these things. Do you grow in these things? Oh, God is so good. We've come a long way, baby. But you be that little bulldog and don't you dare give up. And you come against the devil. And you tell Satan, I dismiss your assignment over me. <gasps> I dismiss everything that you have coming up against me. I dismiss it over me in Jesus' name. Then God will go to work with his faith, and he will remove it, and you will see a mountain collapsed like you've never seen before. Can you do that? Amen. Let's sing it. Let's do it. Let's do it, and we will give our... That'll be our song. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move Someone falls upon their knees Or dares to speak the truth that sets men free Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move
searching soul And someone says, send me here I go, I know, I know, I know, I know We're the generation. You're the generation. You're the generation. You're the generation. Folks, glean from the word of God. Find somebody who has your faith to agree with you. The same kind. No, no, higher even. Okay? Husbands and wives work together. I was I was listening to to um to Copeland. He said, "You know, man, I'm going to tell you this. Gloria has been wisdom to me for many years, but he said I was too stubborn to listen to her, and finally when I did, so many things broke loose." Guys, do you think it's worth it to listen to your wives once in a while? Amen. If it is good stuff. But if it's not good stuff, don't you be messing. Don't you be, don't, 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 no, no, no. We get to pray. We get to pray. Women are laborers, and they will take that time and pray. And they will ask for that wisdom, and they can go to their husbands and say, God has given me a word, and it's going to seem impossible exactly. He's, he's telling this to you right now. Exactly different than what you thought, but it's what you really need. So take it to heart and do it. Hmm? But if it's against the word of God, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't, don't. Got it? Now, Father, we thank you. We have a covenant. Do you have a covenant? Yes. Say, I win battles. I, win battles. I, don't even have to fight. I don't even have to fight. God fights them for me. God he overturns rules, regulations, and laws on my behalf. I'm quick. I'm smart. I'm good looking. I'm a major blessing. Oh, I win every battle that the enemy throws at me because God has already prepared a table for me, for me, in the presence, in the presence of, every evil thing of every evil thing that comes against me. That comes against me. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that? There, that's our covenant. Let's break it and eat. Hallelujah. Oh, oh God is good. God is good. I like that. And Jesus, you shed your blood. So now your blood is running through us, the perfect blood, the healing blood, the prosperous blood. Remember, remember, Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, was already a billionaire. How did he become poor? When he, when he became sin and gave up the Holy Ghost, that's when he was poor. If you're not born again, you're poor. You can be a millionaire, but you're poor. Your debt broke. It says you're dead. But when you're born again and you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, he says you're rich. But what about the money? Shh, 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 shh. Money, it's a vehicle. 
It's a vehicle. Look at the provider. Look at him and seek him first. And all these other things will be given unto you. I got to work longer. I got to work more hours. I got to. No. No. He already has given you everything. Take it by faith. So enter into his rest, knowing that it's all taken care of. Do you believe that? I receive it in Jesus' name. Do you have one more song for us, Debbie? I know. Oh, DDR song. Only name. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Amen. God is dead. Oh, I just love to watch our president. I love to watch what he's doing for us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got to say it this way. I love what God is doing through him. And he's allowing it. Amen. Glory to God. God is definitely on the move. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now you know, while they're getting that, you know now, where is the life in the seed? And the seed is in you, and the seed is in the word, and you speak the word, and what happens? He takes over, and it shall not be re come back to you void, because it's his faith that makes it happen. We just have to believe, Donna. Just believe. You just, no, I believe for the most impossible thing, take the most impossible thing and believe. Just believe it. Oh, there we go. Let's just do it. Say, when you wake up in the morning, how does that start again? When I wake up in the land of glory. No, no. I wake up in the land of glory every morning I wake up. I'm in the land of glory right now because the glory of God is here right now. That's not when I die and go to heaven right now because of what he did for me. Understand it? While you're singing this here, I want, is there anything you have need of? Healing. Prosperity. Victory over depression. Condemnation. Whatever it is, take it. Take it because God has that table waiting for you to just take. Let's do it, boys, girl. Yeah.
Get an image inside of you of who you are. Get an image of who you are. The, the, you know, Jesus became just like God as he grew up and he learned. As we're growing up in the Lord, we're becoming just like Jesus. He's our brother. We are his children. And our daddy is the head. We'll never be better than God. But because of him in us, he says, you're perfect just like me. That's what he said. Do you receive that? Amen. We have whatever we say. Yes. You're going to take that to the bank. Are you going to take that to the bank? You're going to stop the devil from stepping on you anymore. You're, gonna, you're just not going to put up with it. You're not going to put up with it. Do you agree? Amen. You agree? Father, I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against us can prosper. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment, we will show to be in the wrong in the name of Jesus. Father, there is nothing impossible. Nothing now, as we go out, Father God, we are blessed going in. We're blessed going out. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. God, you will definitely change rules and regulations for us because we speak it and we expect it in the name of Jesus. And they all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.